Uh, my talk's called Taking Your Ball, Going Home, Building Your Own Secure Storage Space That Mirrors Dropbox's Functionality. All right. So I'm Phil Cryer. I'm also known as Faker on Twitter and my blog, Faker.com. Sure, thanks. Uh, quick background on me and why I may or may not be qualified to speak here at DEF CON. Uh, when I was a kid, I started learning different uh, programming languages, and I loved uh, learning and playing around with uh, uh, Apple and uh, Basic, Logos, uh, Pascal. And then things changed a bit when I got to high school. I uh, started, uh, it wasn't quite as cool back in the time to be in uh, the computer club, so I actually uh, changed uh, focus a little bit. And I eventually graduated from college with an art degree. And after working a number of different jobs, I just start, found myself getting back into more of a technical roles. And even though I was just self-taught, I really enjoyed it and thought I, you know, fit in. So I started doing desktop support as an IT technician, fixing servers, networking, printers. And it was that time that I came across Linux. And that pretty much changed everything. Uh, I had kind of the same freedom and the same sense of adventure that I had uh, back in the days when I was banging away at the Apple IIe. Um, and all of a sudden we could uh, solve problems with, uh, uh, without having to buy solutions and I could run a Unix-like environment at home too. And being an IT contractor, I worked in a lot of different uh, jobs in the industry, jumped around a lot, startups, large corporations, as well as nonprofits. And it was, it was a good way to learn a lot of different things and being able to uh, uh, think up new ways to approach ideas. And partially because of events of the day, I became more aware and uh, uh, interested in uh, civil liberties. And while they're important at the time to, to review, I think it's much more important to think about for the future, too. So I got involved with a variety of different groups and uh, learning more about them and how can I can help them succeed. So currently I'm working in a nonprofit uh, using Linux and open source uh, to distribute uh, biodiversity data globally. Uh, we've got a lot of partners we work with, and again, it's just an opportunity to use uh, different, different uh, tools and uh, open source to to really benefit a lot of people. And outside of work, continuously exploring open source and finding ways to increase online privacy and security. So that's enough about me. Now the talk. Uh, how many people here use Dropbox? And how many people here trust it with their personal private data? So Dropbox um, always has your stuff. And it does, it's a great little app and it just works. Um, really can't fault the, the design or the idea of it and it works really well. And for a long time I thought it was just a killer app. Very fun, easy to use. And quickly some background on Dropbox. They're a very, they're a very well funded startup company and they offer two gigs of free storage uh, with annual membership to increase the space. Now let's you sync data uh, across many different devices, any device you want. So people use it to sync, uh, they do ad hoc, ad hoc uh, backups with it and social sharing. And it's called cross-platform, uh, which is always nice to Mac, Linux, and Windows, as well as uh, mobile devices. And they've seen a really quick growth over the past two years. And TechCrunch had an article recently that they said uh, Dropbox has 25 million users. And those users use, sorry, they save uh, 200 million files daily and more than 1 million every five minutes, which I couldn't believe. But so to point that out, on average, about 4 million files will be saved uh, on Dropbox during this talk. So if a company has a free app, 
with free data storage and what's to worry about. What do we know about Dropbox's service? Uh, Dropbox, we know Dropbox is secure because Dropbox does so. Uh, they use, uh, the files are always available from the website. All the transmission of the files are over SSL. Files are stored at Dropbox and encrypted in AES-256. So that's all good. Last two lines were a little less convincing. Uh, protect yourself without needing to think about it. I think that's probably not something people at DEF CON are go, going to go for. And the last point, your stuff is safe. But that last one made me say, oh, really? <laughs> so meanwhile, uh, security researchers have turned out evidence otherwise. Uh, Christopher Segoyan has a blog, Slight Paranoia, and he discovered ways that uh, the way the files are uh, detected by Dropbox and uploaded, and basically the hash files are, are compared with what Dropbox might already have in stock or have in storage on the servers, and if a hash matches, it won't actually upload that file. It'll just upload the metadata about the file. So they were able to watch uh, traffic to determine that um, they only uploaded you know, a little bit instead of the whole file. So the idea of data du deduplication makes a lot of sense, definitely with um, concerns to bandwidth and storage, but probably not the best idea for privacy or security. Uh, Christopher's work led to an FT FTC complaint uh, that Dropbox was using deceptive statements to their consumers regarding the extent with which they protect and encrypt the data. Uh, they said it was a deceptive case of deceptive trade practice. Another researcher found a, the authentication, um, I'm sorry, authentication that was done with a SQL, uh, SQLite file. And it's just a simple SQLite file that you can uh, look at. And the problem with that is if you get a hold of that config.db file or a host ID, you can gain access to the person's Dropbox. And when you sign up for Dropbox, you have to actually give rights to, you know, you could, I accept this, uh, this server, or this laptop can access my stuff, this server can access my stuff. So the problem here is if somebody gets a hold of that file and they have access to your stuff and you don't know it, uh, they have access until you actually revoke that access from that box. And Technology Liberation Front, they call Dropbox a privacy black box. And basically the idea of the third party doctrine in the Fourth Amendment is putting the cloud user privacy in question and Dropbox's policies don't do anything to make this safer for consumers. So another good point they made was cloud exposes data to risk that data, local storage doesn't. So Dropbox has some privacy considerations to address, or at least it's safe and secure. Um, they had a, an issue where a new, uh, a new update was updated and it basically made uh, authentication optional for four hours. So you could log into basically anybody's Dropbox uh, using any password. So Again, this was a, obviously an accident, um, but it kind of, again, shows that you know, authentication, not part of your control, um, since it's in the cloud, and clearly an epic fail. So Dropbox confirmed the security glitch and basically pointed out that you know, it was just a code update and there was a bug, and that's cool. I mean, accidents happen, certainly. Uh, but again, it kind of highlights the fact, again, that things in the cloud are, you know, you're relying on somebody else to secure your stuff. So Dropbox knows what you have, may or may not be more secure than the next cloud provider, but at least it uh, protects the information about your personal data usage, uh, except for Dropbox Reader. Dropbox Reader is a set of Python scripts that you can use to basically interrogate that config file and get all sorts of info information about syncing activity, um, including directories you have shared. Uh, and earlier this year, Dropbox changed their terms of service from all their files stored on Dropbox are encrypted and inaccessible without your account password to all files are on Dropbox servers are encrypted. So 
that's definitely a change. So Dropbox is a free app with privacy and security concerns that you can use to freely back up your stuff and share files with people. Uh, but knowing what I know about open source, I know we can do better if you want to keep uh, uh, all the control yourself. So I thought about how to build this and start out, and I wanted to start out really simply, of course. So what can sync files remotely? That's pretty easy. R-Sync, it's been around forever. And also Unison, which is a really interesting uh, option, and it really specializes in two-way uh, two synchronization. So then we wanted to know what, <coughs> excuse me, what we could use to trigger to kick off a sync, like when a file changes or is updated. I notify has been part of the Linux kernel since uh, two six. It basically watches for changes to the file system. It's very fast, and I know that's up to the task of monitoring many files because it's exactly what Dropbox uses to monitor your Dropbox folder. So this is a an error kicked out to syslog just when you're running Dropbox uh, with the default max user watches setting. And that's a great, it's a great uh, error also because again it, it shows you exactly how to fix it so that's great. There's another project called lsyncd and it basically combines the file or the file watching with uh, uh, RSync. Basically, it watches for any file changes from iNotify, and then you can have it kick off different commands. By default, RSync, but it could do all sorts of other stuff too. And how to securely transfer the data, that's pretty much a no brainer. You can go over F OpenSSH, it's easy to tunnel over, and it'll work for Unison also, and um, other syncing things it might try in the future. It also keeps the, the keys client side by default, so. If something goes wrong, you know, you have the keys uh, with the client. So I want to start simple, use lsyncd to monitor a directory, and then when it sees a change, just have it kick off sync uh, to the remote server over SSH. I want to try that, add more features later on once the proof of concept was working and I got some feedback from the community. So September of 2009, I, I put a post on my blog about how to build your own drop, open source Dropbox clone. And basically just, you know, talking about these ideas and uh, kind of a, a little how-to about, you know, you can basically make this work. Um, I thought it was just kind of a really simple way of describing it, but the response is just tremendous. I mean, people just post it nonstop and uh, just everybody seemed really excited about the idea. And it was cool because they actually brought up a lot of different uh, similar projects that were already kind of doing the same thing. But the article got picked up and posted to sites like Reddit, uh, Lifehacker, Slashdot, and IT World. And then at the end of last year, uh, it was in a, a print magazine called Hacker Monthly, which is actually a pretty nice uh, magazine if you haven't seen it. I hadn't heard about it in the time that they approached me, and uh, it's well done. Okay, so I had announced my idea, and I've gotten feedback and compared this to some other methods and ideas, but I still had some, uh, some things that I thought I could do with mine that would keep it a little more open. Um, and yeah, so I decided to press on. And it was time to build a project about, around this idea. Uh, so I put it up on GitHub. They called it LipSync. And it includes just a bash script that's an installer that sets up the environment for you. It's uh, BSD licensed. And it's just set up to be, the project's set up to be transparent and open because it's on GitHub. Um, and I just wanted to get as much community involvement around it as possible. So currently, just pretty basic, but LipSync uh, runs on Linux, watches files for changes, kicks off rsync over SSH to sync the data. It's got basic like growl-like desktop notifications. Uh, but again, great response from the community. Um, users are forking the project, making pull requests, helping me fix bugs, writing, you know, issues. And there's a pretty active mailing list now, too. So this is kind of a basic idea of how it works. Um, again, client has a new file, 
um, and it gets synced to the server. Uh, another client gets another file, it syncs to the server, it also notices that there's a new file for it to grab. And then if a client's not making any changes, uh, there's, right now we just use cron, which uh, just kicks off and checks with the server every now and then to see if it, there's any files that it needs. And future things coming up, uh, Contributor has it up running on OS X. I think it's using FS events instead of iNotify, so there's some changes and things to look at there, but it should be ready soon. Um, we want to make things more secure and private, cool, whatever. We want to figure out the best way to do like uh, encrypted file systems and then looking at other ways to sync like over P2P, Freenet, BitTorrent, see if we can use Tor or another kind of proxy. And we really want to make it cross-platform. Linux is obviously the easiest, Mac. Um, we have some ideas on Windows, how it could work it within Sigwin. I don't know if I want to have that requirement or not, but, but uh, I don't do much work in Windows anymore, so that, I don't know how hard that'll be. But that's another one. And there's more ideas for the community. People are still coming up with questions and um, suggestions for more uh, functionality. Uh, got a basic website up, uh, easy to remember URL, uh, thanks to Anthony. And again, just links to the GitHub page and uh, all the issues and the mailing list. So, conclusions. It's possible to create a secure file distribution app that protects users' privacy and its security, um, but it probably won't be built by a for-profit third party. It'll be built by the community. And we should probably look at all cloud or, or app store software with the same kind of skepticism. I think probably everybody here does. So if you're interested in lip sync at all, you can get involved, try it out. Uh, you can join the mailing list, submit an issue, um, discuss ideas, and continue to ask questions and just explore privacy and security in software. And always bring a towel. And that's what I have. I want to thank uh, my sponsors, SBS Creatix, and also DEFCON, EFF, uh, Nikita, and the great job they did this year, and my family. And there's my contact info. Thank you.